Hello and welcome to my first ever Blender tutorial. In this tutorial you will learn how to animate this valve gear which does not only uh, turn around but you can also change the cutoff for forward and backward or forwards and backwards, I don't know if there are supposed an S at the end but anyway yes th this will be the, oh it's going fast right now, It's this is the animation and you will use some uh, armatures, some bones and um, I originally wanted to do a r quite different tutorial with um, the designing part on paper where I use a camera to film everything and put it together but some things didn't work as I wanted and I really would wanted to do a tutorial and so this is a tutorial which covers the, uh, the basics a few things will be messed up because this is, as I said, my first tutorial and I was rather nervous. I just finished recording it. But yes, as you can see it's still a proper animation so don't worry, you will get it in the end. And I really plan to make a proper tutorial sometime in the future um, where, as I said, use drawings and explain the geometric dependencies and things like that. But for the time being this should be enough to make 3D animations of the Waldschatz valve gear. And yeah, so uh, first of all, excuse me for my bad English, I'm not a native English speaker and uh, I it's a few years since I used it in school where my teacher said no that's wrong and that's right so if I use some words not in the proper way I really apologize but I think you can follow my uh, my tutorial and yeah I hope you will learn something and have fun I will start by hiding everything that I don't need right now which is these wheels I select them by right clicking and press H or what I could also do I select them and go over here in this panel and press the I and there you can see it's now hidden and the frames so first of all what I like to do is to uh, animate the wheels so they turn continuously which uh, is not necessary but I think it makes uh, easier to check if everything is working in the animation. So I will press numpad 5 um, over here you can see it says user pers which is short for perspective and that means if I go into side view you see that the wheels uh, which are farther o uh, further away from me are smaller. This is because of the distortion of the perspective. If I press numpad 5 I enter the author mode and if I press numpad 1 shows it shows me the front author view. I know it's the side of the locomotive but I exported this from SketchUp and something went wrong while exporting but you could uh, turn this around. So. You can see there's no distortion from the perspective which will make things easier. Now, this uh, red white dotted circle is the so-called 3D cursor and whenever I add an object it will be inserted at this position. I will add now a lattice. I can do this by pressing shift A which opens this menu or I can go over here to add and press lattice. I will move this up and over here and what I can do now is, sorry, one, I press Z to enter wireframe mode or I can also go down here and solid was this and wireframe. Uh, oh, sorry. <coughs> uh, by the way, if you want to uh, move around the object, uh, hold down the uh, mouse wheel and if you want to go left to right or up and down, hold down shift and the mouse wheel. So, uh, yes, now I have to move this lattice in the middle and scale it up a bit. To check if it is, if it's in the middle, I simply look at these four points and scale the lattice down again. And if they uh, touch the wheel at the same time, then I know this lattice is in the middle. For example, if it would look something like this, you can see 
it's not touching here and here is uh, already overlapping so it's not in the middle. Now I will duplicate this lattice. Uh, I, I do this by pressing Shift D and now I have a duplicate. If I press now Escape you might think okay I did not duplicate anything but all you did is cancelling the uh, the moving to the right or around. It's still there. So I move this over here, zoom in a little bit and that seems okay. And again Shift D and what you also can do is after pressing Shift D press X and you see this red line which means even if I move my mouse up and down it will only move left to right. And let me check it a bit to the left. Yeah, okay. Ah, sorry. <coughs> if I sometimes rotate, it's because I didn't press shift properly. Now, animating. Uh, if you op uh, When you open Blender, the default value down here is 250 frames. I will animate over 30 frames. Uh, I select the first lattice and it's important that I go over here in the properties panel in this object tab and now with the uh, mouse uh, with the cursor in the 3D window I press I and press location rotation or lock rod for short. This will insert, you can see it's yellow, a keyframe at this position and if I go now to frame 30 I must insert another keyframe. I can do this by pressing R, rotate and enter a value. But what I like to do is go over here. As you can see, I can change here this with, uh, let's make it a bit bigger. I can change it with my mouse or simply type minus 360. Press I again, location rotation. And this I will do with all the other lattices. So I go over here, I lock rot. I lock rot. Down here go to frame 30, select, well it's already selected, minus 360, I lock rot and go to this lattice, minus, th minus 360 and I lock rot. Now you can play the animation by either pressing this button or Alt A. And you can see that it looks not quite right. The uh, the rotation is speeding up and slowing down, but that is really easy to fix. Just go, you, you can see this little triangle over here. Grab it and split your window. And go to the graph editor. And you can see this is your first keyframe. The second keyframe is somewhere down below. And it looks more like a curve. The, the, that's because the interpolation mode is set to Bezier but simply set it to linear and you can see it's now a continuous rotation. Do this with the other two lattices and no, yes. So now you can close this window and that's the lattice rotating. Now you must parent the wheels to the lattices, which is simple. Select the wheel, select, uh, select the, the, the wheel with right click, hold shift down, right click on the lattice and now control P object which means if I play the animation the wheel follow uh, uh, the wheel is now parent to, uh, to the lattice and follows its movement uh, for example if I move left to right with the lattice it's uh, yeah the wheel is following again here select the wheel shift select the lattice control P object and over here control P object now if I enter to uh, the, the solid mode, you can see that yeah, the wheels are rotating. <coughs> so next step would be, uh, by the way, you can stop the animation by pressing escape, alt A or the pause button. So frame one, what I like to do now is uh, on frame one, the rotation is zero degrees. On frame 30, it's 360, which is basically the, the same. So there will be a small lag, let's call it a lag, uh, at frame 30. So I go simply uh, frame 29. And now I have a smooth 
looping rotation. Now the next step would be to make the rods follow the wheel, which is also very simple. I select this lattice, enter wireframe mode, which makes things again easier. Press Shift S and cursor to select it. Now this 3D cursor is at the origin of the selected object. I press uh, Shift A again, add another lattice, scale it down a bit, move it down so that it's in the middle of uh, of the let's um, what's I don't know what it's called in English, but uh, let's call it the the head of this rod. And what I have to do now is to make this lattice follow the wheel lattice, which is also simple. Just select the wheel, Control P, object, and you can see this lattice is following the wheel. If you duplicate the uh, no sorry, uh, now I made yes I made a mistake. Just delete it. If you duplicate the lattice, you can see this dotted line is following this lattice, which means that the duplicated lattice is already parented to the wheel, which is nice because now I don't have to parent it again. Just move it again, uh, scale it down. Oh, sorry. I press A instead of S, scale it down a bit, and there you go. Now you can parent the rods to the respective lattices. And I know if I play the animation now, this will look quite strange because this happens. This is easy to fix. You have to add a so-called constraint. Uh, go over here to the little chain symbol, add object constraint and go down to limit rotation. Now you can see down here the Z axis is going up, X is going right which means that the rotation is around the Y axis. And if I hit Y and here again, at constraint, limit rotation and Y, you can see that now everything looks fine. So with that done, now comes the interesting part, the valve gear. And for that I will hide a few more things because I will start, as I said, on the left side and to make things clearer, I will uh, press B to open, or it's not opening, but to box select this side and deselect, no, sorry, this one and this wheel. Hide. And I will hide this as well. And these, well, I can hide the wheel lattices. I'd only need this one right now. So. Uh, yes, I know that the wheel, or uh, sorry, this rod is not connected to the return crank, but everything is as it should be. And yeah, before I start animating, I will add another constraint, uh, limit rotation, and press X and Z because, uh, let's deactivate it for a moment. If I rotate it now, you can see, um, it is really weird, uh, yes, and that can uh, screw up the animation. If uh, I'm on the side view, front ortho, everything is fine, but I like to make sure that even in this case it works and you can see it's just rotating around the X axis. So let's get started. Um, just uh, another thing. I like to explain some things while uh, doing the tutorial part of this video. Um, the Black 5, as you can see here very clearly, has inclined cylinders. And when it comes to valve gears, everything depends very much on perpendicular uh, lines, even if they are only theoretical, but they are still there in the designing uh, stage. So. If I go into wireframe mode and select the rod and select the wheel, you will notice that this circle, the yellow circle that my cursor is currently on, is part of the wheel and the orange circle is part of the rod. And you can see they are not on top of each other properly, which is uh, because this uh, uh, the Black 5 has inclined cylinders. Um, 
so first make sure that you know the inclination of your locomotive or of your cylinders which is in this case 2.4 degrees Z uh, sorry no I wanted to press a I select this lattice shift s cursor to select it and add another lattice scale it down a bit go down and now I place it in the middle of the I think it's called crank pin down here scale it down a bit and that looks okay Control P and parent it to the wheel. Uh, what I will do now, because um, I can do it now, I also could do it later, but that wouldn't change a thing. I duplicate it and. Oh, damn it. Sorry. Yeah, I'm quite nervous to be honest. Th this is my first tutorial in another language than my uh, mother tongue, it's called, I think, or native language. Yeah, so sorry. Duplicate it, move it over here, scale it a bit down, place it in the middle, and now I have done the return crank. So, uh, this tutorial, or uh, this animation uses a print... Sorry, my phone is ringing, just a moment. Sorry, as I said, my this somebody called me, but it was just an advertisement call. Uh, probably insurance or something. Um, Yes, this tutorial uses a principle which was described by Paul Hobbs in one of his Blender tutorials. And this is one of the things that somebody could consider as cheating. Because what I will do is not create a perfect straight line for, for example, the cylinder and the valve rod, but a uh, arc with a very, very large radius, which would probably be somewhere down here. And this creates the illusion of a straight movement. Uh, but yeah, it's much easier to do, uh, animate locomotives with that. Um, yeah, so first of all, as I said, inclined cylinders and not uh, fitting circles. So I simply select the wheel and rotate it by 2.5 degrees. And as you can see now, oh dang, it's, it's not perfect because... Um, I would have to m rotate the valve, uh, the sorry, the main rod a bit down, but uh, you get the idea. Uh, yes. So I go over here, and dang, I forgot something. Uh, I usually don't tidy up my models as uh, my um, animations, but I will do it now in the tutorial because it makes things quite easier. And n usually I animate everything with lots of lattices in the center or on the x-axis and that can be quite confusing so I will move them out by let's say minus two yes uh, which is fine because the only uh, coordinate or coordinate information that matters is z and x y is completely irre uh, irre sorry, irrelevant as long as it's in one plane so, uh, yes, <coughs> shift S, cursor to the selected, so I'm at this lattice here, sorry, shift A, add another, uh, another lattice, move it over here, so move it in the middle of the crosshead, scale it down. If I rotate this now by 2.5, uh, sorry, 2.4, you can see that the, sorry, again not pressing shift that the line of the lattice and this lines of the crosshead are parallel which means that everything is fine so far um, uh, you can move it a bit down a bit more I think uh, over here should be fine <coughs> okay now um, I duplicate this lattice and move it down a bit and I duplicate it another time and scale it down at this position. So I now comes uh, ah damn I made a little mistake but it's not important because I should have rotated this 
in a moment, not earlier, but th 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 uh, that's okay, sorry. Uh, parent it to this lattice over here and move this down by press Z, so it's only moving on the Z axis, move this down by minus 100 and select this lattice again and rotate it by 2.4 degrees and you can see down here is the lattice and the reason why I parented and rotated it is because if I would have left down here then the arc would go around this point and made a parallel straight line uh, a parallel to the x-axis but now because I rotated it it will rotate like this and make an angle. Next step shift s cursor to is selected shift a armature single bone and you can see down here that's the single bone armature. If I press tab, I enter edit mode and this tail, uh, yeah, I think it's called tail, tail and head. The tail is selected and if I go now up here, zoom in and press G and Z and just go up, it should appear, yes, that is. I know it's rather big, but that's how it should be. Um, press E to extrude and I show you here something as well. If I press E and press escape it's not a cancelled extrusion but a cancelled um, moving because it's still here. So just delete that bone and everything is fine again. So press tab to leave edit mode, select this lattice, shift S, cursor to select it enter edit mode again, shift S, selection to cursor. By that you make sure that this tail is exactly where it should be. And again, leave edit mode, select this lattice, shift S, cursor to select it, select the armature, edit mode, shift S, selection to cursor, and that's fine. The next step, what I do now is go to this lattice again, press Alt P and press clear and keep transformation. If I just click clear parent then the lattice would jump uh, over here again. So shift and uh, sorry alt p clear and keep transformation and I will call this lattice down sorry I don't want caps lock down which makes things later a little bit easier but you will see what I mean in a minute. So <coughs> everything is set up now. Um, now we have to enter post mode. You can do this by selecting the uh, armature and press control tab. And I think, yes, down here it's post mode. And post mode means basically that you, w when you're in edit mode, you can edit the length of the bones or the general position. But in post mode, you can edit how they should move. And now we have to add a bone constraint which is called inverse kinematics and you can now uh, uh, look what the target uh, what the target is called but I will simply press this little button and select uh, I have to zoom in a bit and select this lattice and now it's this bone is yellow which means that it has uh, or that it's moving according to this lattice if I play the animation, you can see, yes, everything works fine. So I press X, but as you can see, this lattice is again straight, which means that this point is not in the center. I have to rotate it by 2.4. Now, these two lattices, um, what I scale them differently so I can uh, see which one I'm currently uh, which is selected and I use usually the smaller one for the straight motion and the bigger one for the um, rot uh, rotating motion. Uh, you will see what I mean in a bit. Now with this lattice selected I go to the chain symbol again, the constraints and add a copy location and select this armature. This lattice will jump down, yes, it's now down below because by default if you enter nothing it's the first bone in the armature 
So I go to bone dot one one, uh, sorry, zero zero one, which is this bone, and I can also choose where it should be on this bone, but it should be here. <coughs> if I parent now the crosshead to this lattice, control P, and play the animation, you can see that the crosshead, oh, sorry, um, if you want to hide this while in solid mode, go to the um, object tab and go to wire. Yes. You can see the crosshead follows this motion. And again, rotate by 2.4. <coughs> now, this lattice selected, uh, you will need two constraints one copy, rota uh, copy location and one copy rotation. Copy location will be the same as before. But now you have to copy the rotation of this bone because it's go up and down, up and down. Sorry, it goes up and down. Never forget the S. Um, yes, select this bone, uh, this, uh, this armature, this bone. And now simply parent the rod to this lattice and everything should work again. Yes, it's coming together quite nicely. 2.4. Now, next step. Um, I can hide this armature because I won't need it anymore. Uh, Shift S, cursor to select it. Alt A, lattice, scale it down. And this lattice must be placed um, at this point. By the way, uh, as I said before, perpendicular lines the combination lever over here should always be perpendicular to the uh, crosshead guides uh, when the wheel is again perpendicular to the cylinder line which is basically you draw a line coming out from the cylinder through the center of the wheel and make a perpendicular line and then you know that uh, this wheel is perpendicular so um Yes, I will now continue with this part, which, uh, because this part over here is the most complicated one, but yeah, it's not very, uh, it's, it's not frightening, let's call it not frightening. So, uh, 90. Now you can see that this fits almost perfectly, uh, the, the return crank and the I think it's called reach rod. Uh, yes, fit together nicely. What I do now is enter uh, uh, wireframe mode again. And now I have to add a lattice in the middle of this point. Uh, I can simply, because this lattice is not parented to anything, I simply co uh, copy it. Because if I just copy it, it will contain its information on the y axis. Why is there why is there a uh, one at the end? Anyway, if there are problems, I simply recall the tut uh, tutorial again. Wouldn't be the first time I have to do it. And I know these are not fitting as well, but that's again a SketchUp issue, not a Blender issue. It will work in the end. So this again, let us over here, duplicate it, put it over here. And this lattice will be responsible for this rod and this lattice for the link. You don't need two uh, lattices here because um, the link only rotates and doesn't move. So yeah, go to this lattice again, Control S, cursor to select it. Uh, sorry, not Control S, Shift S. Now Shift A, armature single bone, enter edit mode, press E, now you have to locate the lattice of the return crank, which is, yeah, okay. Shift S, cursor to select it, sh enter, uh, uh, press tab, Shift S, selection to cursor, select this point, leave edit mode, select this lattice, Shift S, cursor to select it, ed uh, enter edit mode, Shift S, selection to cursor. So what you have to do now is again enter sorry, enter post mode, select this bone, zoom a little bit in, 
constraints and sorry there it is inverse kinematics select the lattice over here and it would just play the animation so I do the parenting now go to this uh, this lattice object constraint copy location copy rotation select the armature select the bone dot zero zero one select the armature bone zero zero one no sorry not that one no come on no yes select the rod shift select the lattice control p object and the same with the link but here as i said you only need one uh, constraint copy rotation of the armature the first bone select the link select shift select the lattice control p object and if i play the animation everything looks as it should yes so i rotate this again 90 and now comes the difficult part or more complicated part um, by the way again this link is basically a circle the center point of this circle must be at this point because there must always be per rotation there must be two points where you can move the valve gear up and down without uh, changing the cutoff which means the, uh, there must be two points which are the left and right at center of the uh, piston where the valve must stay in the center and this is why the link is curved always towards the cylinder and always with this radius so again this lattice make things easy shift d and put it over here scale it a bit up and parent it to this lattice alt a okay that works fine um, so now the interesting part the variations of valve gears or the variations of wall shirts uh, I know this is not a beautiful sketch but it gets the idea transmitted there are several different variations of valve gears I try to sketch them very basically I know they're not beautiful but anyway uh, you might have noticed that some locomotives uh, have the uh, the radius rod which is this purple one above the valve rod on the combination lever and some locomotives or some uh, valve gears uh, no, sorry some uh, steam engines have the read uh, the link sorry the radius rod uh, below the valve rod on the cro um, on the combination lever i'm very sorry but yeah that's why I uh, i've drawn this sketch because if i mix up the english names then you can sh still follow this is because these two have two different types of um, steam admission into the cylinder this arrangement is always inside admission and this arrangement is always outside admission when this side is done animating i will explain a few more differences but uh, in um, the uh, armature that will be requi required to animate these is exactly the same just a little turnaround now the second thing is how the radius rod is moved up and down in the link you may have seen uh, s these arrangements this is the arrangement that will be used here because um, the radius rod goes through the link and is moved up and down by a so-called coon slide which moves on a straight line uh, a variation of this coon uh, slide is the so-called winter tour a winter winter tour anyway the winter tour slide or winter tour valve gear which places the um, pivot point of the coon slide in the center or in the pivot point of the link um, a good example for this one is for example the nilgiri mountain railway x class or some german locomotives but yeah then you have seen probably these arrangements where you have the lever and another connecting rod which moves the uh, radius rod up and down um, for example i think the 
British Railways 9F class uses this arrangement. But again, these two arrangements, basically the winter tour slide and the, I call it now drop down lever, on the left side of the link, and this arrangement with the coon slide and drop down lever on the right side, are again the same armatures. So these two are the same and these two are the same. Just to make things clear, I will um, now animate it with this style. We'll show how to do this. And it's basically just a little change for these arrangements. So everything is simple and yeah, any way. So uh, again, I select this lattice to make things much easier and put it over here. And Shift D S over here and Shift D over here. I'm to be honest I'm I will try now to hurry up a bit because I am already rather long in this tutorial and I don't want to make it boring. So yeah. Uh, I think that's all. I parent this lattice again to this lattice, control P. Move this up by let's say 100 and rotate this lattice by 2.4. So I go up, uh, there it is, and I call this lattice up because I will use it later. Shift S, cursor to select it, Shift A, armature single bone, edit mode G and bring it down. Alt P to clear and keep transformation. Now you will have to create um, four other bones. So I enter edit mode, extrude, extrude, and extrude, extrude. And if I arrange them like this, sorry, like this, you may already see how they will fit to this. So this point is selected. Now I select this lattice, which I will con uh, parent to the crosshead, Control P, and Shift S, cursor to select it. Shift S, selection to cursor, choose the next one. Shift S, cursor to select it. Shift S, selection to cursor. And I will go with this. But first I will have to add another lattice at this position. You will see in a moment why lattice. Just scale it down a bit because this can be deleted later. And yeah, Shift S, selection to cursor. Shift S, sorry, S cursor to select it. Selection to cursor, no, sorry. Shift S, selection to cursor. Ah, okay, my fault, sorry, uh, yes. I know it's quite boring, to, especially because I'm not speaking English properly, but I still hope that you can follow and make cool animations. And there's something wrong. What did I mess up? Hmm. Where is my mistake? Didn't I say I have to add four armor, uh, four bones? There it is, yes. So this bone shall go over here. Cursor to select it. Selection to cursor. Uh, there. Shift S, cursor to select it. Selection to cursor. By the way, although this tutorial uses a principle which was, as I said, described by Paul Hobbs in one of his Blender tutorials, this method of animating the valve gear uh, was my idea, which means that I didn't copy it anywhere or plagiarized it. No, 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 no. This must go over, cursor to select it. So this lattice must go uh, th sorry, this point must go over 
here selection to cursor. Now it is everything. Okay. I will enter now pose mode again to show you a few problems that can occur at this point. Uh, sorry, no. This. I will soon delete this bone constraint, but I have to uh, create it now because I can't see if I make any mistakes or if everything works fine. So I have to do it like this and inverse kinematics and select this one. Now, if I play the animation, you will notice a few things. This rod stays where it should be, which is okay. And now a uh, minor problem. You can see that this bone is moving, but as this is one piece, it should be moving with the same offset and not rotating around like this. Easy to fix. Uh, rotate it 2.4. Never forget to rotate when you're working with inclined cylinders. And the little bit complicated thing is the combination lever rotates around this point, but not with a fixed height. This point must bounce up and down because the height is um, determined by the valve rod, which means that the combination lever moves to the left and right, but still is f the top must go up and down because this point of the combination lever is fixed on this line. I hope that makes it clear. Anyway, enter edit mode again, select this bone, select this bone, press Control P and click keep offset. And you see this dotted line and now you can move them around, delete this bone. And if I play the animation now, you can see this point bounces up and down and it's a straight line. And the reason why I uh, created this lattice and uh, made a bone constraint for this bone is if I wouldn't have done it, then uh, I can post mode. If I wouldn't have done it, it would look like this and I wouldn't have seen anything of the bouncing, which is important, as I said earlier. Now, uh, sorry, I didn't want to split it that way. I want to split it that way. As I said before, I'm going to animate it like this, but also show how this is done um, because these two are again a little, let's call it turnaround, which will be not that difficult. I enter edit mode again and nearly forgot to rotate by 2.4, as I said, important. And this is another thing that could be considered cheating because what I'm doing now is I'm not really creating a Walchitz valve gear, but a Goldstorff or Goldstorff uh, valve gear named after the, the Austrian engineer because this rod will not follow the link, but will follow the center point of the link. So I enter edit mode and extrude this point and shift S cursor to select it, shift S selection to cursor. No, oh, sorry. That happens when you select the entire bone, shift S selection to cursor, yes. Post mode, object, constra uh, sorry, bone constraint, inverse kinematics, select this bone. This will look again really, really weird because you have nothing that keeps the rod in place. So we have to do this now. And why? Ah, okay. So edit mode, post mode. Ah, that's probably because I did, did again forget to 2.4, yes. Now it's in the middle. So this is uh, the lattice that I just created. I move it over here, scale it down a bit. And you will need for every Kuhn slide arrangement an additional armature, but I come to that later. I must press Alt H because I accidentally hi uh, hit. I accidentally have hidden this part, which is really important. And there it is. I go to cursor to center because this lattice can be on the Y coordinate zero, Shift A lattice because this will be another lattice that I'll be naming and this is the control lattice. This will control the 
valve gear and I already applying a limit rotation so that it can only move on the y-axis so uh, unfortunately oh dear uh, yes which one can I hide uh, I can hide this one and this one is armature point zero zero two keep that in mind B box selecting ah I'm in post mode so B box selecting deselecting the this wheel this sorry this rod oh, lattice are you kidding me so now everything is deselected and H yeah looks fine to me and again show me post mode yes where did this ah I think I delete uh, I fit in one of these bones yes so sorry for that little interruption now I will parent no parent this lattice to this control P and now it follows its rotation and 2.4 as I said before I will again my little ugly sketch I will now show how to do this arrangement and later do this arrangement because this is easier than this and with these two you can simply make these over here <coughs> so I move it up a bit like this and what I have to do now is enter edit mode again and extrude this point and I can do that by I yes and extrude it again shift s cursor to selected shift s selection to cursor and now I have to delete this uh, bone delete bones you can see again the dotted line and I must again enter pose mode inverse kinematics no sorry inverse kinematics and select this lattice and now you have basically a completed valve gear because if I play it now you can see this stays in place and I can move this lattice up and down to yeah make the valve gear moving the valve rod if it was parented and connected and so I can backwards but yeah that's how you do it so as I said before Kuhn's light and this arrangement are basically the same but with a little additional armature and yes stop rotate 2.4 huh? 2.4 so now and I can go into post mode again and delete this constraint move this down again because now as I said you have to add another additional armature which uh, will use this bone and this deleted bone as I said same armature for both designs and by the way if you want to do the uh, connecting points or the winter tool slide on the left side of the link all you have to do is make the bone over here extrude it and extrude upwards and uh, upwards for this to move it up and down and from this point you have to extrude again to the center of the link and simply delete this bone and you have the same arrangement now I go over here and this lattice is not no sorry shift D not uh, parented or uh, limited to any rotation or uh, copies any location or something I will scale it a bit up shift S uh, sorry no shift S cursor to selected shift A armature single bone and this a uh, point here must be now oh, sorry must be this lattice 
So Shift S cursor to selected. Edit mode Shift S selection to cursor. And now this will need an object constraint. Uh, sorry, a bone constraint, inverse kinematics, and it must be no not the armature, zoom in. It must be this lattice over here. Because if I rotate now, you can see this um, this bone will follow the uh, the lattice always in a straight line. And now I go over here and before I do that, I will have to add another lattice, move it up by one, scale it down a bit. Uh, yes, I have to go over here, add an object constraint, which is copy rotation of, I think it must be this one, let's check. No, it was not that one, I have to go zoom in a little bit. Um, it must be... Why isn't it copying? Oh, copy rotation, sorry. Yeah, everyone undoes mistakes. So if I, no, not that one. Copy rotation of this armature, please. Ah, that's the problem, yes. I must select the bone, even if it's only one. So anyway, it works now. Um, <coughs> what you have to do next is uh, add yet another lattice. Uh, sorry, Shift A. Parent this one to this one, Control P. Move this up by 100 and Rotate it, no, sorry, not that one. Rotate this by, you may have guessed it, two, no, sorry. That's a different angle, but I would say that five degrees is about right. I try really to hurry up because it's, let me just check. I'm already recording 53 minutes. And yeah, it, I really don't want to make this more boring than it should be. So I simply delete, sorry, delete it and go up here. There it is. No. And over here you can see it's minus two. I will now press seven to enter top view. Press shift D to copy it on the Y axis by four units and parent it to one. Parent it to the lattice over here. Object, yes, no, come on. So, and again, select it, go down here. Because these two will be responsible for moving the radius rod up and down object. Go, oh, sorry one go up again select it shift s cause to select it go down and now this lattice uh, sorry this armature must go up there selection to cursor yes and again pose mode Select that bone. Inverse kinematics over here and select, no, not the armature I wanted, the lattice. Have to zoom in a bit. Come on, now. So if I didn't mess it up completely, Everything should work now. Pre Shift A. Let's try it. Okay, it's bouncing up and down, which is good. And yeah, it works. Perfect. 
all I have to do now is linking the entire uh, 2.4 linking the entire um, rods to the lattices but it should be done in a few minutes so this shouldn't take any longer than I won't do the other side to be honest it would take too long uh, but yeah anyway this lattice I give a copy location copy rotation information select the armature select now you have to uh, try to remember which bone it was I think I extruded the top ones first which means that uh, it should be no yes this one and now do this again armature 2 bone 04 and parent this rod to that one. Now this lattice I must duplicate, scale it down a bit, copy location of this armature and this bone. This will be the valve rod, control P. Now this lattice will be the combination lever This armature, bone 3, this armature, bone 3, and combination, no, sorry, combi, no, nation lever, object, <coughs> this lattice will follow, I will hide this additional armature, by the way, if you do the, this arrangement, um, just a moment. One of these two arrangements where you have a rod going down, you don't need the additional armature. This is only required if you do the Kuhn slide or the Winter Tour slide. So, um, and another thing, as I said, inside admission is radius rod on top of valve rod, but if you want to do outside admission, all you have to do is go into edit mode, sorry, no, go into edit mode and move this point up and this point down. And as I said, it's basically the same armature. O the only difference is that you have to turn around these two points. Yes, copy location, copy rotation of this armature and it must be bone two, yes. Armature, bone two. Select the rod, select the lattice, control P, object and now you have this one left. This is uh, must simply copy the. Just a minute. I don't want to make a mistake now. This must. Oops, sorry, I came at my mic. I think this must copy the. Look the the the. Uh, Sorry, the rotation of the additional lattice. Where was it? No, I think not. I don't think that it was this one or no. Doch, it was. Uh, yes, it was uh, this one. So, uh, shift S, add another cursor to select it. Lattice over here. Scale it down and make it copy the rotation of this one over here. Uh, where, the, uh, where is it? Copy rotation of this lattice and make it copy location of this one. So it should move, yes. And now parent it to the lattice. If I check it, you may see, yes, it works not perfectly for some reason. I probably messed up the lattices up there or they are not properly aligned, but you get the idea. The first animation that I did uh, over a year ago worked fine. I'm probably just, yeah, I probably just messed it up because as I said, I'm a little bit nervous. Now move this, uh, sorry, rotate this by 90 degrees. 
And this uh, part here, let's select the lettuce, shift S, cause it was selected. Shift A, lettuce, scale it all the way down. This must uh, copy the rotation of the lettuce that, where is it? Yes. Of the lettuce that's, that follows um, the uh, the center point of the circle of the link. So select it, object constraint, copy rotation. Uh, no. Over here. And again, at object constraint, copy location. It must copy the location of uh, sorry, of th this point here. So, um, no, sorry, uh, that one. Copy location, which is armature two. And now again, just go through the bones, not that one. Yes. Let's check. Yes, it works. And parent it to that one. Object. And I think think that's everything done now. If I didn't mess up anything, I can hide these two bones or armatures. I can hide that one. And yeah, I know it's extremely laggy, but if you export the animation so that you don't have to calculate anything, uh, you should be fine. So Let's, uh, but what I can do, if I press N, I can go into this um, uh, transform window, go to display and only render, which will hide all the relationship lines. And what I can do now is press Alt H, N and press five. And go down here to my, where was it, where was it? Control lattice. What's going on now? We ah, no. So yeah, that's the animation of the Walshatz valve gear. If I choose my control lattice, by the way, this up lattice and down lattice would be used for the other side because I would simply move then uh, four blender units uh, on the Y axis and I, so I don't have to parent it again and rotate it, but yeah, if I choose now the control, or uh, sorry, select the control lattice, I can move. Ah, there's something I forgot, but that's no problem. Uh, only render wireframe mode, because I have to parent this thing to this lattice. So only render five, and now everything should be. All right, let's check. Alt A. Rotate. What the hell did I mess up now? Just a minute. Uh, yes, uh, as I said before, I'm probably just forgetting something because first tutorial ever, different language. But. Okay, again. Alt P, clear parent. Is this the right lettuce? Yes, it is. So I select this one, select this one, Control P, Object. Why is it not working properly? What am I missing? Is this... No, it's not parented to anything. I'm terribly sorry that something obviously is not working as it should be but I also uh, yes you can see it in the animation I did over a year ago everything works fine but what is going on here do I have to set the origin which uh, shift S because we select it uh, set origin, uh, or 
origin to 3D cursor. Is it working now if I parent it? Object. Yes. I really don't understand why I had to set the origin, but anyway, it works. So, no. Only render. If everything is set up properly now, hopefully. I know what the problem is. Uh, control at um, limit rotation x y. Yes, that's how it should be. Um, by the way, you that's one thing you can also do. You can limit the rotation of this uh, lattice. So, for example, now you can see everything is passing through each other. So you can add, for example, uh, uh, you can add here some values. If you limit the x and then, uh, sorry, if you limit uh, the y rotation, you can add values so that it doesn't go up here, for example. But anyway, uh, I know that this is already passing through. But yeah, press 5, so you have perspective mode. And that's it, how you animate a Walshitz valve gear. Just a few things. Uh, the f I think it must be this lattice. No, this, yes. Indeed. Um, as I said earlier, there are always two points in a valve gear where the valve must stay in the center. And if I move now up and down, eh? sorry, one five, uh, less is one. So rotate it by 90 degrees and select control again. If I move up and down, you can see that because I forgot the 2.4, this point is only moving a tiny bit, but it stays in the middle. And this is why, as I, uh, as I said before, the link must always be curved towards the cylinder and always be curved around this point. But yeah, that's how you animate a Walschitz valve gear. This principle can uh, be adapted to any other valve gear. Every valve gear I did on my channel, which is uh, Joy valve gear, Bagnell, Stevenson, uh, Baker, use the, the same principle. It can also be used on uh, uh, other valve gears like, for example, Gooch, uh, Allen valve gear, and also some crazy variations. But maybe, or not maybe, I really would like to do a proper tutorial. Um, sometime in the future, I can't tell exactly when, but I will maybe do the already existing animations, as I said, Valve Gear, Baker and Joy, uh, make a tutorial for them. But yeah, that's it. And thanks for watching. Sorry for my terribly English. I hope that you could follow and learn something from this tutorial. And if you have any questions, leave a comment and I will try to answer them in the comments. And yeah, thanks for watching and goodbye.